Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Farquhar. I'm managing partner of the DC office here at Hogan Levels and wanted to say two quick things before I introduce you to Amir. Uh, the first thing is I, I really want to note that this is the 10th Winnick Forum that we've put on, and it's so important to celebrate the life and legacy of Joel Winnick. I thought Eric did a great job of describing him, in fact, perfectly for his relentless curiosity. And one thing that he really left behind for those of us, Ari and I in particular, and Mark Brennan and others who worked with him, and some of whom are here, like David Saratsky and Eric and others, was the fact that he really wanted to encourage us and challenge us to dig deep on issues and also to do a lot of creative thinking around them. And finally, and importantly, to think globally and beyond just DC or the US, but, but how it would affect things, lots of other people and domains, which is fabulous. So that's really a, leg a legacy that a lot of us are celebrating here today. And then secondly, on behalf of the DC office of Hogan Lovells, I really wanna thank you for your participation here. And in particular, I wanted to note that we have, in addition to the industry sector groups that Mark described, we have 15 regulatory practices right here in DC, as well as very strong corporate and litigation teams. And they're knitted together very well by the, the industry sector groups that Mark described. And what we like doing is making our clients and our uh, people who come to forums like this feel smarter and also work hard to, on behalf of our clients to solve their problems. So if we haven't quite made you smarter yet, I get to introduce you to Umer. So uh, the pressure's on Umer. Um, you're the final speaker of the day. We're so thrilled to have you here. And thank you so much for joining us. He is the chief counsel for FCC chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel and served as her legal advisor from 2017 to 2021. Thank you, Umer. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thanks, everyone. And let me just start by setting some expectations up front very quickly. I do not have $1.5 billion to hand out to you guys. So if you want to go up, get the reception started early, I will not blame you at all. Uh, but, but I am happy to be here uh, in any case. I'm happy to help close out today's session and share the FCC's perspective on Open RAN, at least. Uh, and I'm especially excited to do that because Chairman Rosenworcel started talking about the power of opening radio access networks all the way back in 2019. Uh, she was the first at the FCC to start doing that. And back then, if you were building a wireless network, you only had four vendors really to choose from uh, for the equipment that went into that network. And back then, the vendors that were growing the fastest were all from China, uh, in part because the Chinese government was deploying very powerful industrial policies to make their equipment less costly than the alternatives. And back then, national security agencies were sounding the alarm about the risk that came from having this equipment in our networks. And finally, back then, uh, there were some who said Open RAN was just pie in the sky. Well, I think today's forum uh, demonstrates that we've come a very long way since then, uh, a really long way. Uh, there's so much momentum in industry. There's so much momentum in the U.S. government. Uh, we have multiple ORAN deployments across the world, including right here in the United States. We have intense levels of investment, of experimentation, of testing. Domestically, thanks to the CHIPS Act, for the first time, we have new funding to support all of this activity. Internationally, we are leveraging, as a U.S. government, our export credit and development finance tools to help level the playing field uh, for trustworthy vendors. This is all very good stuff. Uh, and, and at the FCC, we remain committed to creating an, an enabling environment for, for open RAN technologies here in the United States. And we've recognized that the most important thing that we can do at the FCC is continue to deploy next generation wireless networks uh, to everyone everywhere. And so we're continuing to do that. We also created the very first public record on the state of development and deployment of open RAN networks in the United States. That public record became the foundation for various congressional and other initiatives. We stood up two innovation zones, one in Boston, one in North Carolina, where open RAN testing can happen. We've offered to fund carriers' transitions to open RAN deployments through our Secure and Trusted Communications Networks Act reimbursement program. That's a mouthful. 
we also brought vendors and carriers together through various showcases. That way, vendors can learn about what carriers' needs are as they look to the next generation of their deployments, and carriers can see what's possible with Open RAN technologies today. And we've made Open RAN a priority in our bilateral and our international engagements. So we're creating the conditions that foster innovation and investment. And we're going to continue to do that at the FCC. And that's the message that I wanted to come here and deliver to all of you guys today. The chairwoman is committed to this technology. She's doing a lot of work on it. And we want to work with you guys in order to, to take it to that next step. But at the end of the day, obviously, we're counting on all of you to develop and deploy this technology. So thank you guys for coming to this forum. Thank you guys for continuing to work with the FCC. And we look forward to carrying this partnership through to the next stage. So thank you. And we'll see you upstairs. So in closing, um, I'd like to thank you all for attending the conference. And as uh, was mentioned, I invite you all to join us upstairs in the solarium for uh, cocktails. Thank you again.